Hello everyone. Um, I am going to jump online and do our question and answer um, right now just because I've got some time and we don't have a lot of questions so um, I thought this would be a good opportunity to just kind of knock it out and start waiting till later um, when Luke comes home from daddy's house and he may or may not be a distraction so I thought we would just get, jump into the question and answers. Thank you everyone who joined me for Second Sunday, um, I know for a lot of you, especially mentor students, that was probably a little bit of a repeat, but you know, again, time over time over equals certainty. So practice and kind of putting the pieces together a little bit differently is important for all of us for where we're going. It's gonna be um, a heavy and a light month, if, if like that makes sense. You know, there's gonna be heavy parts, but it's gonna just, it's all about just stirring the pot and getting everything really mixed together, which is you, and allowing yourself to to, um, you know, be, be who you came to be in whatever face is presenting itself in whatever circumstance. So I'm just going to jump right into the question and answer. And um, I know my energy is returned, which is great. Um, I thought, you know, I might be having to sit for a second Sunday just because I got so drained last week. But really, energy came back. So hopefully some of you guys are starting to feel your energy coming back. It's a little sense of calm today, a little energetic sense of calm, which is always nice. Um, doesn't mean that another storm is coming. I think right now it's all about introspective. It's all about really just kind of like looking within and like, okay, this, 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 and this, and how does this all work together? And what parts do I want to keep? And what parts do I want to let go? And asking yourself those, those good subconscious questions, you know, that bring you into those subconscious and unconscious places. So they don't have to constantly be tested by your manifestations and your reflections outside of you. So I'm going to jump in. All right. Why is it that I could literally only remember 10 childhood memories before the age of eight? You mentioned something in last week's video about why people block their memories. I had a loving dad who was so patient with us kids and my mom, although, um, stressed out from work and doing everything around the house and gave herself completely to raise us, loves me and my siblings, or is it because I may be a walk-in? Um, I don't see you as a walk-in. Um, I think the reason why we remember childhood chunks is because of frequency and vibration. Um, the soul holds on to the things in the biochemistry that have importance, data. Right? It's almost like when you read a whole book and you pull out your highlighter and you highlight certain things. That's pretty much how the soul does your like review as far as your childhood goes. That's why sometimes when you're time traveling, you'll go back to like that same scenario. And your job is to take those eight childhood memories and go deeper than you've ever gone before and see if it unlocks basically either more or more memories or more freedom. Because we don't need to remember everything in order to, you know, um, get the premise. It's like the reason why you remember certain things that happened in childhood is because it's like the summary. Um, and but between the ages of one and seven, there isn't a huge responsibility on our shoulders to constantly reinforce who we are because we're, we're making it up as we go and we're being so heavily influenced by the people and places around us those first seven years that we're not really in judgment of, of what we're becoming. We're just becoming. So we're not analyzing it. We're not logicking it. We're not judging it. We're just showing up, which means that there would be no reason why to collect certain memories unless they were of sub sort of substantial information, like whether it was trauma or joy, the overall like feeling about your childhood is so completely distorted based on, um, it, I, I call I call like when people tell me about their childhood and they're like, I had an okay childhood. I'm like, that's like drinking a sangria. There's 25 different ingredients that make it taste so much different than actually having to go through like each different scenario as a child. Like what you do is you take like the best and the worst and you make a cocktail of it and then that's the story you tell as you get older. But when you start going more into your feelings and you start honoring your emotions more, those pieces that are, are important will start to come back to you. I mean, I've had this experience with the mentoring students where, you know, they've all of a sudden spontaneously remembered situations in their childhood that they 
didn't need to remember until this point. The soul never needs you to know what you need to know until you need to know it. Um, and there's a lot of times in childhood where you're channeling mom and dad so you wouldn't have your own memory centers. You're just channeling mom and dad's energy because an another responsibility of, of the age group between one and seven is to be the grand reflection for the parents so that they can see where they're vibrating. So you're, you have a quite of a big responsibility as a child. You're downloading, you're trying to hold your state of being, you're reflecting your environment back to itself, and you're, um, you know, you're like learning. So there's a lot going on and it's almost like when a movie's moving too fast, you know, and it's like all of a sudden and someone afterwards goes, oh, well, tell me what happened. And you go, well, this is what happened. And so really it's more about, and I say this in every question and answer, it's so much less about the storyline and it's more about the importance of the feelings. So it's less about the dream and it's less about the childhood and it's more about how it made you feel and who it made you become. And, you know, it, if, it, it be, if, you, if it made you become tough, if it made you become weak, it, it's like, what did that bring out in you? Have you ever watched, like, a, just a killer movie that just inspired you to be, like, a, just a badass for the rest of the day? Or, fat, you know, watched a really, really sad movie, and then for the rest of the day, you were kind of in that vibration? So everything is frequency and vibration. And, and for those who don't, don't know what a walk-in is, because you may be hearing that term for the first time, what that term is, is that a lot of times, you know, again, the soul has no ownership over bodies. We're literally wearing a body to have a physical experience, the ability to focus, the ability to manifest, the ability to experience some emotions and channel feelings. That's what the body's for. The soul has no um, loyalty to the body. So a lot of times what will happen is a soul will have a soul plan. I'll say, okay, I kind of want to check out earth for the first like 15 years, but don't really want to be more than that and don't necessarily want to cause myself a death experience. And so another soul will say, well, I'll pop in at age 15, either in a near death experience or in something and I'll take over, and because the brain and the body are storing the memories, I'll just pick up where you left off. I'll still be me, but I'll have your memories. It's like I'm driving your car. And that's why a lot of walk-ins usually, like, they start to tend to go in a totally different direction with their life as soon as they walk in. And that's not as common, I've noticed. In the last few years, I haven't seen as many, like, new walk-ins. Um, because a lot of people are walking out, you know, they want to work for from this ascension aspect from the other side. That's why we're having such a huge death increase on the planet right now is a lot of people are saying, you know, I'm done with this experience, don't necessarily need to see the whole movie, kind of want to, you know, fill me in on the highlights on the physical realm, I'm going to go work in the non physical realm. And, um, you know, and, and because again, ego slows the journey down so much that you're moving at a snail's pace compared to what a soul could do without a body. So hopefully that made a little sense. And that's what I really want you guys to get back to is to stop looking at your circumstances for your answers. There are going to be no answers in your circumstances. Your answers are in the feelings. Your answers in what does your circumstance represent to you? What does that person represent to you? What does it, does it represent fear? Does it represent love? Remember, there's only two frequencies left. It's actually very, very easy to have a legitimate intimate conversation with your unconscious and your subconscious at this point where we are right now because you ask a question you get an answer what does this feel like well it feels like pain okay what does pain feel like it feels like loss what does loss feel like it feels like sorrow when have i what, what am i in sorrow about and then the activation terms that i gave you guys last week if you want to know where you're sad, you just say the words, I miss you. And all of a sudden, you start writing down all the things that you miss. You believe it or not, you miss things that you've totally blocked out on. You know, your favorite toy, you know, the way you used to sit on your dad's lap, or the fact that you didn't have a dad, and you miss the fact that you didn't have the dad. We have disassociated and downplayed so much of our emotional frequency that now it's haunting us in our physical reality and it's constantly manifesting and projecting itself in people, places, and things. And we think that the people and places and things in front of us are the issue. And none of that is the issue. It is a reflection of the basically unmanaged, unloved frequency and vibrations within you. Okay? So 
that is the answer to that question. Hopefully that was of service to you. Hi, how important is our astrology birth charts? Has it any bearing or understanding for our mission purpose here or is it just a permission slip? Yes, it is a permission slip, which is basically like um, uh, you have permission to understand more of yourself. It's like I said in Second Sunday today, it's, it's, a, it's a map, it's a blueprint, um, it's a navigational process, but at some point when you start to really have a good relationship with the me, myself, and I, you don't need to go back to your charting for your answers because you're getting that direct connect, okay? If your subconscious, unconscious, and, and um, conscious mind are completely in a war between themselves, astrology will help you make sense of those different aspects of yourself. Because basically, if you look at your charts and you get your charts all the way done, there's a Mercury, there's a Mars, there's a, there's a Venus in you, there's every aspect. And you're like, oh yeah, that's where I, that's how I do this and that's how I do that. So really, I believe that what you know, I use for astrology for some of my clients is to help kind of put the pieces together of why they are the way they are. Because again, like I said in Second Sunday, the soul is completely absent of personality or identity. It's just a fractal consciousness of love. So it puts on an identity to play an archetype or a um, avatar on the planet. And we use, we use astrology to build the avatar. So, you know, it's kind of like I'm a Gemini. And, but I've also met Geminis that are acting out completely different type of Gemini behavior, but we're still a Gemini. So it's like, you know, you can have two white people in the room and they acting completely different. So again, it's like, it's more of kind of like when you're building your archetype or when you're building your avatar, you're using your charting as a way for you to be able to navigate back to self-realization. But self-realization happens when you turn and look inside. And hopefully that's what you're using astrology for is, oh, okay, you know, I didn't do my charts until two years ago and it was actually done by a Tika student, Lauren. Um, I had no desire. I was one of those people that's like, I kind of don't want to know because I want to create my own destiny. And so, I mean, I, it wasn't, gosh, it wasn't even two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. She's like, I just want to do your charts, you know? And she's was the one that like did all the way down to like the 12th house. And, and she basically sent me this email and it, it literally said in, in summary, you will be a spiritual teacher. Like, and I'm glad that I didn't read that when I was totally unconscious because I wasn't ready to experience that truth for myself. So like, I want us to use astrology as kind of like that, that walker at times that you need when you're just like struggling a little bit, but it, it shouldn't be your absolute because then that creates rules and it creates dogma around what your potential is because there's a lot of signs in Gemini that are not necessarily positive aspects that I don't display anymore. Like I've completely healed my ADD and I've healed my flakiness as far as showing up in responsibility the way that I used to 15 years ago. 15 years ago, I could have used that as an excuse. Well, that's just how I am. I'm a Gemini. So when they, again, that's a spiritual ego aspect. So we want to use astrology for like path of least resistance or moments of it's like flashlight in the dark type of energy and then use it to kind of guide yourself back to yourself to remember a little bit more. And then there will be a point where you can be completely oblivious to astrology, yet you know exactly who you are and your next step is flowing and you're just channeling the moment and you're showing up and, and someone will be like, yeah, you, your astrology chart said you would do that. And you're like, well, here I am doing it. It doesn't really matter. So I hope that makes sense. So it's, it's there as a compass, it's there as a guide, it's there as a map, but pretty soon you're, you become the map. So you don't need the map. And I, the reason why I do talk about astrology is because I know that it helps you guys kind of go, oh, well, that's why I was pissy this month, or that's why we're sad. And, you know, I mean, even when I went into my sorrow, I was like, hmm, what's going on collectively? Let me look at the moon cycles. So it's like I needed that little flashlight in the dark for myself. Okay, so that's the purpose of astrology on this journey. All right. All right. I go into phases of meditation where I'll be consistent and then move into other morning readings and podcasts. How important is it to meditate daily for 20 minute period? Thank you. I love this question. So meditation actually has so many different meanings. Okay. To me, meditation is connection with self. 
It is that conversation between you and yourself and I. It is you moving away from your circumstantial um, intoxication and moving inside where you really are. And how you meditate can be a thousand different ways. Like what takes you back to yourself? Is it the 20 minute meditation that you do? Or is it gardening? Is it painting? Is it you know, re rocking a baby to sleep? Is it petting a dog? Because there are so many thousands of different ways for us to get into that state of being. But as far as importance, yes, absolutely, you need to be in that state of being at least 20 minutes a day, if not half your day. It should actually be all of your day. But again, until your belief systems change that you create your own reality and that you call the shots and that you are making the intentions and that you are here to be the actor, director, and editor, then it needs to be at least 20, 20 minutes a day where you are totally with yourself in the state of bliss and absence of logic and necessity and loyalty and obligation. You are just in the flow of just being, which means you're just connecting with self. Um, my, my Mine looks different every day. Medi uh, exercise gets me there as long as I'm alone. Like a group exercise does not allow me to get into a meditative state, but like alone, like if I'm just on the floor doing yoga or if I'm powering it out on the treadmill, or if I'm running, I can totally get into that relationship with myself listening to music I can go really really far um, painting um, life coaching is meditation um, I mean there's just thousands of different ways but the importance is is if you're not connecting to yourself then your outer reality will feel disconnected from you and you will feel lonely and you'll feel isolated and you'll feel like a victim so the more you connect with yourself the more your outer re reflection will begin to connect with you Okay, so it was a really good question. Uh, hi, last week's Q&A was really helpful. I am taking really good, great, great care of my body, letting go of some fear and actually self-sabotaging and feeding my inner child fun, healthy foods. This week I faced a trigger, the scale. Been there, girl. The number was lighter than I thought it would be with all my healthy changes. Um, was higher, I'm sorry. Do you recommend avoiding the scale? Or since it's a trigger, should I investigate further what lies underneath time travel to the source of the time, the scale trigger? I was a chubby growing up. Can a belief that I can't lose weight keep the number on the scale from moving? Any insights or advice moving forward? I would say that I actually am an expert, expert, expert at this question. I have lived this story so many times. Okay. So let's go into the first part. If you guys know, and hopefully everyone here is, is ready to take the opportunity to get into the academy, the number one thing that I teach while you're on this journey is never, ever, ever take score. Your job is to take stock. And let me explain the difference between the two of those. When you are in a state of being that makes you feel good, right, then you are that state of being. But what we do is then we quickly look to our physical reality to see the reflection be an exact one-to-one -to, -one to how we feel. But that's not how energy works. First and foremost, the energetic blueprint of the feeling has to be created. And that feeling has to vibrate all the changes in the cellular body to get the memo all the way down to the base root of the old story and shift the molecules in the system so the body could get a new memo to feel how you're feeling and then action shows up later but what we do is we go wow I feel like a million bucks where's my million bucks oh you see how I took score and as soon as you take score your vibration will crash because here's the thing you are feeling thin you are feeling free. You are feeling good about yourself. You are feeling all of the feelings that were really getting you closer to the number on the scale changing, right? But then what happens is you get on the scale and it doesn't reflect back to you how you're feeling and you feel that immediate contradiction and then your vibration drops out and then you're like, man, what is wrong? Like I was doing so well. So as far as avoiding the scale, throw it away, okay? Believe it or not, feeling your body into the body weight that you want is such a healthier way than the scale, okay? Now, what I would do is I would allow myself to, once I got in a healthy routine, I would allow myself 
um, to get on the scale like maybe once a month, but I always I always went into the feeling place because the scale is 3D and the feeling is 5D. So how about putting on some clothes because that's more 5D and going, okay, this is still a little snug, you know, and then going, okay, what, what does my weight represent? Because let's go into the take stock. Taking stock is like, what do I have to work with here? Right now I have... I'm getting my inner child healthy. I am learning to eat mindfully. I'm changing the way that I eat. I'm feeling better. Wow, I am feeling the essence of a healthy, thin person right now. That's the taking stock. And you need to milk that and milk that and milk that because you've years and years and years and years of your body not feeling safe because that's what weight is about. When we're carrying extra weight on our body, it is because we don't feel safe. So you are just beginning to create safety for your inner child and then what you did was you jumped on the scale and then you made her feel unsafe again because now she's not good enough now she's not doing well enough so now it's like fall out of that vibration so throw away the scale get back to your feeling state of being and then every once in a while try on clothes and you'll feel it instead of see it because when you see it it's like it's real feel it like mm, okay this is this is a slight change and then surrender it and then go back to the energy so how manifestation works is first the energy changes the pattern changes then the neural pathway changes in the brain then the cells get the new data download then the cells practice a new story and then the manifestation shows up so I've had so many times where I was like feeling good and and doing well and just really taking good care of myself and working out and eating perfectly and that scale was not budging at all and then I went okay so that part is good so where else can I look for a reason why my body wouldn't surrender the weight and I will tell you the number one reason why your body will not surrender weight is because there's something in your environment that is making you not feel free or safe to be yourself so you are in hiding so if your body is running a hiding frequency, you could eat perfectly. You could eat lettuce and gain weight because, again, it is mind over matter, right? Or you'll lose the weight and then someone will have a trigger point for you and then you'll gain it all back. Done that a thousand times. So it's really about honoring, taking stock. Like right now, my job is not to get on the scale. My job is to feel good about my body for 60 days. And then at 60 days, I'm going to try on a pair of pants that I love or something like that. That would be because then you're taking stock and going, okay, well, I still have some, some room for improvement. Who's around my life that is making me feel like I can't be expansive? And therefore, what I'm resisting is my body's expanding. My energy's not allowed to expand. And that's exactly why we put on weight. Okay, so that was a really good question. Um, and a belief that you can't lose weight, look underneath that belief. Why can you lose weight? What does being thin represent to you? What does being sexy represent to you? You know, what it's a safety issue. Okay? It is a safety issue. It isn't really about I don't believe I can lose weight. It's more about can I create a healthy relationship with myself where I can maintain my weight? Because again, we gain and we lose and then we let ourselves down and then we take stock or we take score and then we fall out of our vibrational, you know, um the higher realms into the lower place and then we sabotage ourselves, and then it's just like this repeated cycle and really I dealt with that for like 30 years so I have so much compassion for that particular question but your job is to get away from the dieting and the food and go into the safety and the surroundings create joy for your inner child create safety for your inner child let your child be seen and heard because when we carry weight it's because I don't want to be seen and heard even though conscious minds like I want to be seen and heard and I don't feel safe in my body and then your body's like, but I want to, I want to look good. You know, you see the dual stories that are going on vibrationally. So if the scale's not changing, then the subconscious mind isn't changed yet because that scale, your body is a, you know, a feedback system for your subconscious. So the, the body will only begin to lose the weight when the subconscious mind believes that it's safe to do so. Okay. That was a good question. All right. So I started a new job at Zen Zone. All the people that work there are amazing. When we go in, hug each other, and when we all leave um, each other, it's really cool. Never worked at a place that was just so loving. Yes, but there's a but. But everybody's getting ready to quit because of the, own, the owners are assholes. Oops, 
Yes, and because of this, they are bringing the vibe down of the business. And I'm just getting started, and all the people are supposed to leave tomorrow. The owners came in today and belittle, and belittling his wife right in the middle of the store. It's not good, but all the people that work there are awesome. What should I do if the owner would... What? Let me read this again. There are awesome... What should I do if the owners would stay away? We could be all fine. Okay, so what, spank you. What does the owners represent to you in your life? Like, what do these owners, because you keep getting into these situations, perfect situation, bad opportunity, where it's like you have to leave or you can't have what you want. So this is really a pattern for you. So in this situation, you've attracted all these amazing light worker friends that are being suppressed by the evil owners. So go away from the owners because the solution is not the owner staying away. The solution is you being a higher vibrational being and saying, okay, Let's look at this. This is just a script here. What do these what 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 do these owners represent? Right? They're belittling, right? Like I want to hear personality traits and what they're actually doing and then I want you to go in and say what does this represent to me? Who does this remind me of? When has this happened again because you're just repeating a pattern. Now you've got this great job and you're not going to be able to stay because you're going to be suppressed. So suppression, when else have I been suppressed? Again, free to be yourself. And you doing this could really change the frequency of this place because you could like share this information with other employees and then you could gather together and then you could maybe work through it because now you're all a vibrational match to being in the right place with the wrong people. You know, and having the right opportunities with now, gosh, am I going to have to leave again, which is becoming a real pattern for you. So I want you to move away from the circumstances of this job. This is a story and I want you to go into the energy of what all of this represents and what this actually feels like. So then there's work to do, husband and mother still. So all this is is a reflection of I still feel suppressed. So we've got to go back in. We've got to go deeper. There's some sorrow that you're really needing to let go of. Okay, I can feel that in your body. We're all like pretty much over these stories. So when you're ready to go all the way into the sadness of losing your husband and the sadness of the family, because I know what we do is we run we process, we do the time travel sequence, but we haven't really gone into the grief parts and that's what underneath is the intuition. So looking at even this situation here and going, this is just a reflection of where I've been in the past. Let me take a breath. Let me do some work on myself. It could literally change the situation for all these employees that wouldn't have to quit the job and really like step into your power as far as as a visionary, as an empath, and as a healer, and really be the change instead of looking at this as one more problem. Because this isn't the problem. The problem is coming from yourselves recreating the story, which means you'll be a vibrational match to this particular business. So we gotta go back to the drawing board, back to where the stories were created, and we've gotta use all the tools that we've been using in class to really go, okay, this is happening again. You can't go fight fire with fire out there. You can't rally everyone against each other or say, well, if the bosses weren't gonna go, because then you're just gonna manifest it somewhere else. I want you to look at this and go, thank you for showing up. You're telling me where I'm still vibrating. You're telling me that I still got this story. Let me go back to the drawing board. And I'm telling you, this Aries energy that we're in right now and we're about to move into Libra, this is some commanding energy where you're like, I am done with this. I will go have the sorrow. I will have the grief. But like, I'm going to light this story on fire because that's Aries is that fire. Okay. I want you to really decide to be done with this. And then I want you to go into your, yourself and ask yourself, what would this be like to not keep carrying the story? Otherwise, you're just going to keep outrunning it, outrunning it, outrunning it, and you're going to land in it directly in each and every platform, you know? You're, and the reason why I'm giving you such intense, self, like, tough love right now is because you and I literally, like, have walked the same path. Like, we had the same triggers, with the same way we keep showing up in the past, and it's like, I want this for you more than anything, for you to be able to stop this storyline and be with yourself and know that you are the creator of your reality, which means you are creating these bosses. 
Like we really need to get responsible for our reflections and really start taking ownership that there is no one else around you except a reflection of the deepest parts of the unhealed and loved parts of you, okay? You got this girl. All right, P.S. One of the girls tried to talk to the owners and she got fired. He is bullheaded and will not listen to anyone. I find something awesome and then the boss is a jerk. I need to align. Okay. All right. I've really become obsessed with the thought of parallel realities and wanted to get something straight. When it comes to parallel reality, is it true that in your reality you create any version of anyone you want? Since there are many versions of you, of, of us, for example, someone would be dating a version of me in their reality. If they focused on that thoughts of me liking them, they would create that reality for themselves. And in my reality, I don't have to like, I don't have to like them. So therefore, I'm not dating them in my reality, and I'm interacting in a different version of them. Basically, there's no free will, and whatever you believe about someone will be so because it's your own reality. Okay, so I totally understood all of that because I see parallel realities. So, all right, I'm going to get really basic here. There's just one person in the room right now. There's one being in the universe. And we are imagining ourselves in different potentials and different realities and different sequences and different viewpoints and belief systems keeps you stuck in a parallel reality but when you open up a, open up those belief systems you shift into a different parallel reality and because we are not we are not solid beings there is a million different versions of you which means there probably is someone dating a version of you that they've manifested somewhere in their parallel reality you don't have to be conscious of it but we create our own realities so there might be someone who is literally dating a fractal version of you because they willed it so much, but it's not taking from your consciousness. It's, it's like, it's almost like if I mass produced a baby doll and I gave everyone the baby doll, they all look the same, but everyone's going to have a different experience with it because this is just a hologram. It's just virtual reality. This isn't real. So when you shift into a parallel reality, you're having the experience that you're having and someone else is having the experience that they're having and it's perfect, which means no one can put free will over your consciousness unless you're unconscious. Now, if you're unconscious, you'll end up in someone else's manifestation because they were more conscious and that will be a trigger to you. But if you're conscious creating your virtual reality, then someone may be just as powerful as you and they're creating a version of you you know, it's funny because my ex-husband, not my, my ex-husband, for three years after we dated, he dated three Jessicas and they all looked like me. That's how badly he wanted me to stay in that relationship. So again, it wasn't technically me, but it could be. Because again, every time I have a thought, I fractal myself into a parallel reality. And so there's a billion different fra fractal pieces of me. And therefore, if there's someone who wants to be in a relationship with me, and that piece of my relation, my consciousness is a, a fractal piece of his consciousness and soul contract, then that can be together and, and that has nothing to do with me and I'm not going to feel that or know about it. All I know is where I'm focused right now and I'm holding my responsibility of where my quantum focus is and I choose my reality and I choose who I'm going to be with and I choose what I'm doing and if I find myself in someone else's movie, it's because I'm unconscious, okay? Hopefully that helped you. All right. Okay, Matthias, um, is there black magic? Yesterday the idea came in my mind. Why am I in India? Does the 5-E-M-O-D-M-T medicine woman somehow called me to India? Some past actions now confuse me. Or to ask directly, can you see that some magic influences me? Again, the level of your consciousness dictates how influential you are or influenced you are, which means that when you are not having a conversation with the three aspects of yourself, then that means you're listening to, to someone else's aspect of themselves, and you will be drawn into their, their reality and you will be catering to their reality much more than you are creating your own reality. See, when you're not in alignment with the three voices within yourself, then you're in alignment with something. 
So you might be in alignment with your conscious mind and you might be in alignment with someone else's subconscious mind. And so you're following in the direction of where they're going versus where you're wanting to go. But as far as going to your first question, is there black magic? Absolutely. Everything you can imagine in the universe exists. Everything exists. But black magic doesn't mean evil. It is, it is absence of light. Just like I can go into the light to create a frequency, I can go into the dark to create a frequency. Love, fear. Okay. Now, again, it goes back to if you're unconscious, you're controllable because you're in fear. So all you have to do is look at fear and say, I'm not going to be in fear anymore. I'm going to be in, f in love. And now you're literally uncontrollable by, the, by anything in the universe other than your higher self. But you've got to make that choice and say, I am not, I'm choosing to not be afraid of this. I'm choosing to look at this as a, as a direction that I needed to go. And now DMT and all of these plant medicines that you guys, so let me talk to you a little bit about plant medicine. It's kind of the way that I feel about altering your body. Okay. It's about the intention behind it. If you guys are taking DMT or smoking marijuana or getting drunk or doing ayahuasca or doing any other type of, of plant medicine or some, 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 some conscious altering um, influence on your body, if you are doing it with the intention to surrender your power to something bigger to save you, it will not help you. If you're using it to expand what you already know and give you a greater aspect to more of yourself, then it will help you, okay? It's kind of like altering your body. If you lose 100 pounds but you don't change your mindset around it, it will all come back, which means you will be a vibrational match to the feeling, not the effort. So I have seen a lot of people... Like, I've actually seen a lot of spiritual teachers say, well, the first thing that I do is I take everybody in and we do ayahuasca. And I'm like, okay, I don't agree with that method because ayahuasca is something that to me is a gateway that you have to be very conscious. You have to be the creator of that experience. You have to be able to know yourself well enough to be able to trust yourself to go into those places. And it, it can, it's like if you're afraid if you're in fear and you do ayahuasca, it's going to be the exact counterintuitive process. You'll still get where you need to get, but it isn't like, I'm in a really good, a badass place. I'm ready to go to the next level. I can't get there on my own. Ayahuasca, right? It's kind of like when I'm doing the mentoring and I'm interviewing you guys. If you're afraid and you're looking for me to fix you, we're not a match. But if you're like, I'm so done with this. I'm ready to go to the next level. I just don't, I can't see the blind spot. I'm like, game on. So it is the exact way that I'm talking about that is the use of these plant medicines. There has to be a solid intention that you're utilizing it to become more of yourself, not to get out of fear because fear attracts fear, which means the experience that you'll actually have will take you more into a circular motion of facing more of those experiences. And that's a really important question and I'm glad you asked it. Okay. Oh, hi, Jess. Thanks for the beautiful session yesterday and the great class today. I feel so much more peace. I do realize I miss home so much. Will you tell me more about my origins? Is it my first life? I incarnated here on earth. Also, um, I feel very drawn to the mentoring and intuition screams to me. So my question is, do you see if my blocks about deserving money are ready to dissolve? It has been a very long, big struggle for me during the last few years and still is. Do you see it shifting once I reconnect with my real essence and allow myself to be me? Or what will need to happen to end the money struggle for good? Okay, so there's a couple of different questions in there. Um, I think you're absolutely ready for the mentoring because... Uh, in our session, I watched your frequency shift when we talked about it and you went into a place of yes, you are so ready to shift it. And again, it isn't the money. You don't have a money problem. You don't feel safe. Okay. You don't feel deserving when you don't feel serving and you don't feel safe. Your money lines dry up. You have got to step into your power. You have to be like, okay, I'm an alien on earth. Wow, that feels better than feeling like I don't belong here, feeling alone. 
You know, start saying things and see what your body percolates towards. Like, oh, yes, this is your first lifetime on Earth. You are a star seed. And there's a several other of you Tika students that this is your first go, which makes it a lot more difficult for you to resonate towards home. And I'm noticing all the star seeds that are here on the planet right now with their first incarnation, you guys are supposed to be working with sound and light and color and movement because that's home, frequency, vibration. You may not deserve to be in that family right there, but you sure as hell deserve to play this music and dance, okay? So you need to find the frequency of who you are and start vibrating that. That's why I said the money thing will go away when you start to feel deserving and safe to be here, okay? You chose to be here. It's not like you got tricked. You chose to be here, but it's always scarier for those who haven't spent time on this planet. It's like, it's like, it's like being the new kid at school, you know, and everyone's like, oh, first day, yeah, it sucks, you know, and it takes you a while to get used to it. But if your body perpetually feels like the new kid on the block, you're going to be scared of everything and you're never really going to be able to get ahead. So what I would be working with you in the mentoring is, is first and foremost, is really connect you to your power and your purpose of what you're here. And you're focusing on nothing but that. Earth is just a circumstance. It is just the ballroom to which we play in. It is not something that is bigger than you. You are bigger than 10 suns. You are slowing your vibration down to be in a body that can barely tolerate how big you are and you're ready to explode and that feels like anxiety but it is actually passion and excitement. But you don't have an outlet. So that's what we need to do. So absolutely yes. Hello Jess, many thanks to you and the TWC staff for providing us a place for, for us to find comfort until we are able to learn to be comfortable within ourselves. I appreciate you all. My question relates to meditation. I have started getting back into the habit of daily meditation since I've started back up. I've noticed that several mornings a week I immediately get a feeling like a pressure or a fullness, maybe an energy where my third eye is. While this sensation is occurring, it's very difficult for me to place my presence or focus on other areas, chakras of my body. I usually have no problem with this at all, but on these days where the pressure is occurring, I feel a resistance to placing my focus anywhere else. Okay, got that question. Um, let me get into the next part. The fullness of pressure is coupled with a noise in my ears. It's not really a ringing sound. It's not a solid monotone sound, either because it raises and lowers and it loops in and out in some weird layered multi-tone frequency thing. It's like several tones on top of tones on top of another. I can feel the tone breaking away from itself and then looping into an arc and then reconnecting with a part of the tone that seems constant. The sound increases and decreases and sometimes just a part of the frequency increases or decreases while the arching tone stays the same. I appreciate you trying to understand this. I totally do. Um, it's tough to describe the sound. I'm not sure what to make of this experience, so I've tried a couple of things. I've tried to communicate with the noise and considering that the great company that this is a group that this group provides. I don't think that is weird at all, which is why I don't hesitate to say that I communication was first intuition on how to handle it. I mentally greet the tone and sometimes it, se it seems to react through an overarching sound and the volume of one increases over the other. But I don't understand the noise and so I have no idea how to interpret what's come occurring or even if um, what I should be doing. Sometimes I just maintain focus on the sound and stay aware of it. I don't shift my focus. I stay present with the sound. I just feel like there's more I need to do or that I'm missing something. So that's why I'm asking for your assistance. This happens a few times a week. Sometimes it's more profound than others. The first time this occurred was over a year ago, back when I was doing an hour a day every routine. Since I've started back up, it happens more frequently than it did back when I'm, grow when I'm growing more curious as it could be. Okay, so first question is, um, you know, you feel kind of a resistance to going into other places of your body. I love the fact that you're honoring just staying where the focus is. Again, when you start getting into these meditations that start taking you into vibrations and sounds and, and visions, which is everyone's intuition is opening up. And for you, Steve, you are both sound and light healing, like it's coming through, like clairvoyance, clairaudio is starting to like come. 
uh, what I'm going to tell you is this is, a, this is actually a collective trying to speak to you. This is a collective trying to work directly with you and they're speaking a language that it sounds like sounds. So I loved your intuition about greeting it. That was actually going to be my first answer and I'll, since you've already taken a step towards, towards honoring that it is communication taking it one step further and allowing your body to breathe in. Your DNA can translate this language, but your logical mind says, I don't understand. And I know what you're going through because I've been doing this with light language for years and waiting for the feedback system to translate it in English so that I can channel it. And now I can go right into the frequencies and know exactly what it is. So it's about allowing it, allowing your logical mind, your logical mind won't be able to translate this language. Your, your third eye and your throat chakra and your heart center are going to translate this language for you. So what you could do is you could say, you could ask open-ended questions like the greeting is perfect and then allow yourself to just be in the flows. Don't look for, um, don't logic like, okay, there's an arch here and there's a pin here. Just become the tone, become the sound, become one with the channel. Because what it's trying to do is it's trying to play with you and it's trying to orient you to just let go and surrender, okay? Because right now it's not information, it's connection. It's connecting with you. Okay, this, this is a collective of beings that is, that is basically, they are, they are connecting with you and there's a lot of conversations going on, okay? So what I would like for you to just do is just be the observer and feel what it feels like to be in the flow. Greeting it is perfect and then when it is done, what I would love for you to do is go into a state of gratitude for the connection right? It's almost like when you go into a foreign country and they have very different ways of, of like doing dinner and you're sitting at the dinner table and everybody's doing certain things and at the end everyone bows their head and you bow your head. It's kind of like that until you learn to translate but just being really open, staying out of judgment, don't go into frustration that you don't know what it means because you actually do know what it means but it isn't a language that ego can connect with or any part of your humanity. It is so much bigger than that. So what what I would like for you to do is greet them and then say to yourself, I open my heart to this connection. Breathe into your heart. Breathe it into your root so that your root feels safe with the language and the collective. Bring it into your solar plexus. Bring it into your sacral. I, I communicate. And then when it's done, you can ask if there's anything that I needed to know about this transmission. In the path of least resistance, bring that information to me. And then watch what shows up in the next 24 hours because I guarantee you if you really like play with this in the next 30 days, you're probably gonna be channeling this collective. Like you'll be able to communicate directly, but right now you've gotta kind of like be that, you know, person from the different foreign place watching because you're it's it's a really badass collective. It's very cool, very awesome, very, very, very freaking cool what you're doing right now. So keep doing it, okay? All right. We are a wrap. That was the quickest ever. Um, we will have class on Saturday. We have more activations coming. I'm going to begin quantum healing, which I'm so freaking excited about and it will look different for everyone because quantum is all so everyone will be different a different type of healer when this is done and a different type of messenger when this is done you will fall into the aspects of your creation and your soul mission and your soul experience you're not going to learn how I do what I do you're going to learn how you do what you do which is so exciting and then um, I'll post a new question and answer tomorrow morning and we are going to just get back on track but I will honor my own integration I will honor your integration. I want you guys to reach out to me and say, I need you to step back a bit. I need you to slow down. I will honor you. I will honor myself. We are gonna do this together. I want those who are just getting started for you to reach out to each other. You know, um, I had a great session with Annette today. I'm sorry, he's in Dublin and I want him to connect with some other people in Dublin, I, I believe, which are two mentoring students. So, you know, um, connect with each other online but then if you're new 
Also find some people that are close by, maybe hours drive. I know some of you guys are already making road trips to see each other and I think that is the most awesome thing that I could have ever heard in my entire life. Matter of fact, I will be making some road trips out towards the end of the year to see some of you guys and you know who you are. And um, I'm just super proud of you guys and you know, we made it through the storm. Some of you might still be at the tail end, but you know, this, this Aries energy is all about the fire now. It's like, okay, we had the tears. Now, who are we now? Who are we without the sphere? Who are we without these situations? And then stepping into that power and that's where we're heading. So I'm right here with you. I'm down in the trenches and we're all doing it together and I love you all. So thank you guys so much and I will see you soon.